Hey everyone, it's Brandon and Phil from Zade Comics, the artists and creators of the upcoming graphic novel Magic Cop, set to launch on Indiegogo in August of 2019. And we are the two best looking brothers in the whole comic book industry. And today we're doing another car video. The first time Phil is driving. I can drive. Because it's raining. I'm not <laughs> driving my car. Uh, <laughs> so. One thing that came out of E3 this past week, uh, actually I guess E3 is still going on during this video, uh, was Battletoads. Um, you may or may not know this, uh, we work in the video game industry for our day jobs and we're pretty fond of Battletoads even from back in the day we used to play it on home console, um, Double Dragon and Battletoads, uh, the arcade machine, Battletoads, we have one here at the arcade, and uh, seeing this Battletoads... Well, last year I think they had a teaser for it. Did they? Yeah, and it was just, I think, one of the characters on the bike, like going like going crazy, Yeah, I don't and remember then the that. symbol. It was a teaser, So, which I was excited the about. The most recent, prior to this, the most recent Battletoads event was they put them right. into rash is in killer instinct killer instinct uh the game by was it iron galaxy yeah. now uh so it's a fighting game if you're unfamiliar with it it's uh xbox one only release uh they put that character into there and it was a huge success everybody loved that rash was in uh, in killer instinct from battletoads which was pretty cool. He looked very nostalgic, very muscular, um, very athletic, and and that was really cool. Uh, went over very well. A huge success. Then apparently they teaser uh, they teasered Battletoads last year, and I didn't see that, so I don't know. Uh, was the reception good? Yeah, I mean I was excited for it. Uh, just getting you know that that tiny teaser and. Uh, waiting to see what was going to come of it, but we hadn't seen anything until now. Right. I think it was a couple days ago, if I'm not mistaken, they released a full trailer for it, um, action-packed full trailer, uh, heavy music, a lot of impact, a lot of colors. Uh, back in the day, Battletoads really wasn't that colorful. They made it a lot more colorful now. Yeah. Um, the problem with it that a lot of people are having is that it's not the Battletoads that we know at all. Uh, like, Killer Instinct did a pretty good job of making it so that, the, you know, Rash looked like the Battletoads we know and love, and now they've taken the character in the vein of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and they have kind of simplified the characters. They've taken away their their muscularness um they've made them mostly head to be fair they were frogs or toads so you know they have a, a large face but back then uh, they had a lot of body too and now they're mostly head um and i think that's the one of the biggest criticisms that people has is that it looks very nicktoonish um the characters don't have their own style to them. It kind of just goes along with whatever style is the most popular right now. And I mean, I went using the word popular is not um, the right term, but let's say the most commonly used art style for animation as it's probably the cheapest because you can easily do it in that flash animation style. And Dude, that's what it looks like. It looks like a flash. Right. Game. It looks like an internet game yeah, from like Newgrounds or something stupid. Definitely. Yeah. And the animations are very quick. There's no impact to them. And this is now the video game criticism. Like art aside, yeah, the art looks really bad. Uh, the problem with the game and gameplay, it looks like a really poorly engineered game. Like the sprites are 2D animated flash game looking sprites and then you go on to the backgrounds and the backgrounds are uh, poorly rendered 3D backgrounds so that they look like they're 2D and they're poorly rendered not in the sense that they're really low res or anything they just look really bad the characters don't look like they belong on the background and you could see that in the 
uh, the hover bike mode levels, or the yeah. levels. Um, it looks really, really bad. And then, obviously, one of my biggest criticisms, especially uh, with the art that I like to do, which is drawing uh, women, they've taken the Dark Queen and just completely changed her into, uh, I believe, I've seen her in Fairly Odd Parents, if I'm not mistaken. I think she's probably one of the villains or something. Uh, giant head, no breasts whatsoever. She's just wearing a long trench coat, no skin showing. If you guys uh, have ever seen the Dark Queen, take a, take a look at what the old side art on the arcade cabinet was. You can see here uh, the Dark Queen's this voluptuous, sexy woman. And you can see that the battle toads are these jacked out of their minds monsters and they've taken that away you can see here this is what the dark queen looks like now and come on what are we supposed to what are we supposed to be doing here like who is this game for and you could argue oh it's you know for kids and what that's why it? we're doing that but you could put the up, up the example of battletoads was going to have a tv show right in and, the 90s and, and the dark queen looked like the dark right queen from you the can game. show her here too yeah. look at what she looked like in the cartoon she looked like a cartooned version of the one from the side art and right. from the game. Like, the one from the side art is very, very human looking, um, you know, and in the cartoons she's a little more cartoony, but still showing a lot of skin, and that's, you know, that's really, really cool because that was indicative of the art style in the late 80s and 90s. Right. And you cannot say to anybody that we're creating a Battletoads IP for a new generation, nobody cares. Nobody now is gonna be like, oh, Battletoads. Like, my generation is the one who likes Battletoads, and we're, this is not Battletoads. Right, and like the, the new generation of gamers, they don't wanna play a side scrolling beat em right. up. They don't they understand don't even, they don't what that is. They don't what side scrolling beat em up is. They want multiplayer online. Right. They, they want that instant gratification, right. and when they die, they wanna jump right it's back in. Like, you could see the success from Cuphead. They did it so well where they took that art style from what they were doing that throwback from and they matched it up perfectly and that's what should be going on here. Look at Streets of Rage. Streets of Rage is another arcade game from the early 90s or late 80s. Uh, it was super popular on uh, home console. You know, they had arcade editions and stuff, but it was really, really popular on home console. Streets of Rage 4 is now in development and it's going to be coming out soon. Look at the art style that they have in there. It almost perfectly matches what you expect to see in Streets of Rage from back in the day. And that's going to make a successful game because, like Phil says, you're catering to an audience that remembers side-scrolling beat-em-ups. You're not introducing these new kids to side-scrolling beat-em-ups because they don't want that. You could see how, I'm sure the demographic that was playing Cuphead was not these little, little kids that are getting into Cuphead. It's gonna be your adults that really like the side-scrolling beat-em-up platform. So one of the problems that I have with the artistic decision with a lot of the way that characters are going nowadays is you could look at this meme of here are your action heroes in the late 80s and 90s and you have Sylvester Stallone, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Dolph Lundgren and Jean-Claude Van Damme. These guys that are just ripped, right? And they're obviously these strong masculine guys. And then they're look at your action heroes now in 2019 and it's uh, Robert Downey Jr. and uh, Benedict Cumberbatch and or the other one's probably Tom Holland or something. No offense to those guys because those guys do a really, really good job at what they're doing. However, using Battletoads as an example here, like you can't fault Robert Downey Jr. and Benedict Cumberbatch for looking the way that they do because that's the, how they want to look and that's cool, you know? But you're choosing to take these ripped, super huge mutant toads and you're going to make them thinner and you're going to take the big fat pig guy in the game and you're going to make him not as grotesquely fat. Now, I remember growing up and looking at some of these guys, like Batman. You look at Batman and it's like, man, I want to be Batman. 
I want to go to the gym and get some muscle and be Batman. You know, not, well, oh, look at this skinny guy that already looks like me. I have no aspirations to do anything. Like, I don't need a character that relates to me in my life because I'm living my life. I want something to escape from that, obviously. That's why we play video games. And I feel like creators are getting rid of those aspirations for people to have something to look forward to or to look up to or to better themselves. That's why, you know, the the generation now, it's like, where are you going to go? So is that why they're choosing to be like this? I don't like at all the artistic style of what they're doing. When we were designing a Magic Cop, this side-scrolling beat-em-up, the complete intent of that game was to make the characters just like they would have been in a late 80s or early 90s side-scrolling beat-em-up. Like, muscles bulging out of their suits, you know, the werewolf guy hunched over, the woman super sexy, because that's an idealistic approach to art. And that's what used to be cool. And everybody that I know, there's a huge, huge crowd of people that still love that. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why they think that this is successful or why they think that the people that are, they're trying to get grab that demographic uh, are gonna enjoy that because we're not enjoying that. I'm that demographic. I'm the guy who played Battletoads. Yeah. You know, we're not enjoying that. So that's just, obviously the game's gonna come out. It's probably gonna sell well and uh, it's not gonna last. There's no way it's gonna have any staying power, of course, because it's a game that's coming out now. Yeah. So it is whatever it is, but uh, you know when, the thing about it, it's also like the defeminizing um, the dark queen. Yeah. She literally looks like a child. Right. Or like a boy. Any of the bad, uh, the battle toads could just backhand her and then the game's over. Well, she's she, probably got magic or something. Yeah. Well, right? she, she's just. She, the first one looked like a threatening, kind of like dominatrix. Right. Gonna beat the crap right. out of you. Um, and our, our friend Pablo, who did the cover of Magic Cop for us, he did this awesome rendition of the Battle Toads. He actually posted it this week. He did it this week because he didn't like the trailer for the new game. And it shows the Battle Toads. Um, they're beaten up by the Dark Queen. And it's totally classic, yeah, 90s, 80s awesome. style. Such a throwback. Um, and that's what they needed to do uh, to, to rip the old fans of the game. Sure. Like, I... This version is so. It's trash. How does April O'Neil look in the new Turtles? I don't know. I've never even seen yeah, it because know. nothing about that interests me. They don't right. look like Turtles or anything. We watched Batman versus Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, but I don't know. Yeah. So hopefully you guys uh, have some opinions on that. You could share with us. So write them in the comments below and we'll see you next time.